So the area under each of these curves is exactly one. In fact, the area under any density curve is exactly one. So what we're gonna to try to do here is find the area between negative one and one. Now, just by looking at that area, you might already have a guess. If the total area is one, what area is this green shaded region? The empirical rule tells us it's 68%, but let's calculate it exactly. We're gonna use a function called norm CDF. So if you press second and vars on your calculator, go down to the second option, norm CDF. It says, what do you want for your lower limit? Negative one, that's the left end of our shaded region. For upper, we're gonna put positive one, which is our right end of our shaded region, and we're gonna leave the mean and standard deviation as zero and one, which is the standard normal distribution, which is what Z follows. So when I press paste, and then enter again, we get this area, 0.682689, etc. So it's pretty close to 68%. On the next one, we're interested in the area being less than or equal to zero. Now, I don't even think we need a calculator on this one. I actually know the area is exactly half. If the entire area under the curve is one, and we're interested in everything to the left of the middle, that would be half but let's do it on the calculator just for fun. When we press second vars again, see this lower limit of negative one e to the 99? That's the lowest value we could possibly put in there. So let's just leave that. For our upper limit, we'll do zero, and our mean and standard deviation are gonna be zero and one again. That last little five there is just caused by rounding. So this is a situation where our actual analysis and looking at the graph is more accurate than the calculator. Now on these next two, you have to use the calculator or a table of some sort. The empirical rule won't help us with these strange values. Now let's start with this one. Our lower limit is negative 1.8, so that's about here, and our upper limit is 0.5. One thing to note here, this is less than, and this is less than or equal to. On continuous density curves, it makes no difference. There's actually no area under any single point. So whether it says less than or less than or equal to means nothing. You don't change your limits to adjust or compensate. You just leave them exactly as they are. So by looking at the curve, you might have a guess, but let's press second, vars, to get to our distribution menu, and we'll select norm CDF again. Now our lower limit this time is negative 1.8, and our upper limit is 0.5. And we'll leave the mean and standard deviation as standard normal, zero and one. So our area this time is approximately 0.6555. Now on the last one, we want greater than 0.39. That's about right here, and greater than is everything to the right. So we're gonna press second vars again to get to the distribution menu one last time, and we'll select norm CDF. Our lower limit is 0.39, and for upper limit, we don't have one. It's supposed to go on forever. So we're just gonna put a bunch of positive nines right here. And this time our area is about 0.3483, which looking at my sketch, I think I may have shaded a little bit too far to the left. 0.39 is probably more about there. If you like this video, check out my normal distribution playlist. It covers things like z-scores and normal calculations, percentiles, and ogives. It's a great way to prepare for the AP stats exam.